and he or she is going to receive the award. And most often, no one in the audience knows. This is an unusual situation. Uh, I'm Marcel McClough. I'm the chair of the Lifetime Achievement Award Committee. And I want to recognize my colleagues, Katie Swafford and Susan Akashan, who worked with me in this project. A Lifetime Achievement Award focuses on the pioneers who have contributed to and influenced the field of body psychotherapy and beyond. The 2010 recipient joins an illustrious group of daring individuals such as John Paracas, Alexander Lowen, Ilana Rubenfeld, Stanley Kellerman, and Ron Burns. To say to today's recipient that in no way does this award imply that we see you on the crest of your last wave. <laughs> <laughs> and Anne and I did not coordinate our metaphors. <laughs> we do anticipate many more seasons of surprising clinical and scientific creativity, which will continue to shape the shoreline of our dreams for body psychotherapy. The 2010 recipient is a man who remembers the words of Carl Gustav Jung, as in the article by Mary Jeffroff in the news notes. Quote, the right way to wholeness is made up of faithful detours and wrong turning. <coughs> he is a man who confesses that, quote, we always study what we need to learn that we must not only follow our bliss, but march courageously through hell to the other side. <laughs> he is also a man who recognizes in gratitude how he stands on the shoulders of prior pioneers who perceive the intrinsic relationship between mind and body. He has made a difference in the world and he has helped us to also make a difference in our spheres of influence. So on behalf of the USADP membership and the board of directors, we are proud and pleased to present the 2010 Lifetime Achievement Award to Dr. Peter Levine.
wanted to just say a couple of things. Um, as, as, the, as this award was sinking in, I started to really examine my life. It became a very powerful catalyst. And looking at many different aspects, looking at aging, at uh, the first time really not having the expectation that, uh, that I have, how is that go? That I have as many years as I am now yet to go. You know? And uh, while I've been fortunate, my health has been generally pretty good. I have wonderful, wonderful friends and adoptive family. Um, reward of being able to follow my own bliss, as Joseph Campbell says, that of discovering. And I, as I look back as a child, I was always into discovering things. When I was four years old, I, I made my first crystal radio set, or wound the coil, and actually listened to my first radio station. And uh, even when I was younger than that, I. Uh, uh, I visited my uncle's ship, an aircraft carrier. He was a sailor. I mean, he was, he wasn't a sailor, but he was in the Navy at that time. And then I tried to make a boat, and I couldn't understand why the boat sank when I sat on it in the bathtub. It was enormous. <laughs> and that one, you know, and that it didn't sink in the water. And my mother says, that I, I wouldn't get out of the bathtub until I discovered Archimedes' principle. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when I began my path in, in the 1960s, late 1960s, I was very fortunate because the definition of trauma as PTSD had not yet, had, had not yet been uh, uh, put into the, can the canon of the statistical diagnostic uh, manual. And so I didn't know that trauma was supposed to be an incurable brain disease, <laughs> fortunately. And so I was really free to explore uh, areas from ethology, the study of animals and their natural environments, and how they become, how they are immune from uh, constant predation, constant threat, constant danger, and how the human animal is so susceptible to that, and what we can learn from the animal kingdom for our own resilience, our own recovery. So this, as I say, became a, a, a lifelong study and culminated, in a sense, in the book that I just finished that just was published a few weeks ago in an unspoken voice. And when, also when I finished that book, this is another strange story, I, uh, I was in Zurich and I uh, sent the final galleys uh, to the uh, printers. And so I called up everybody that I knew and all my friends in, in Zurich and you know who I'd been putting off for the last few years. And uh, I'm too busy writing. And um, we went out, we had dinner, we went to, to hear some music, we went to dance and so forth. And then, about two weeks I was, after that, I was sitting in my flat and I had a pen of paper in front of me and I started writing. And I realized, oh, okay, I'm working on a book now on memory. And but it's interesting. I really felt a great amount of pleasure in doing that. And I realized from this announcement from the USABP that a weight is off of my shoulders. And I see so many of my students, our students, and, and
and the teachers who are teaching uh, some of the experience in work now, that this really doesn't have anything to do with me anymore. It's out. Time to relax. <laughs>
sometimes when I would give a lecture, this was after Waking the Fire had just come out in 96, I think, and sometimes somebody would go, <coughs> come up to me and say, oh, you know, uh, your book really helped me understand what I'm doing. And I, I, I realized that my work is very much like yours. And I tell you, in all honesty, I was a little bit arrogant, a little bit more arrogant than I am now. And, uh, I said, yeah, right. <laughs> Don't you wish. <laughs> But I realized that was the highest compliment. Because what I had captured, I think, in that first book was this zeitgeist that we are talking about waves. I was really taken by that image. Because really these are these waves, this wave that really is, that we're, they're all on in our little boats. But these little boats are all in this different uh, organizations that teach different parts of this therapy and into this kind of an umbrella organization, <coughs> the USAVP. So, um, so anyhow, uh, I, um, yeah, and I, I think now really that what we're doing, which is really, really quite, quite powerful, is taking this ancient knowledge and again, not rebranding it, but really making it come alive in, in, the, in this professional setting of, of this age. And again, I'm just amazed. I, I mean, so many people who are in hospitals, who are doing work, who are teaching in academic institutions. And it's, it's just a matter of time where this will really get the, able to give the full benefit to humanity that, it, that, it, that is capable. I wanted to end by just uh, making some suggestions of uh, some other people I think that are really deserving of, of this award. And uh, one of the people who was just mentioned is Eugene Gentleman. And Gene also gave us a language to talk about what we were doing. Before, before his, his book on focusing, we didn't have that language. And we have it, and it's the right language. Two words, I think maybe even without a hyphen, felt, sense. Body sensations, contours of feelings, feelings of approach, of avoidance, of gladness, of happiness. Of, uh, this was, this, this, this was, and he himself is not a body therapist. But he gave us that language, and, and, and say is a great grandfather, and he's in his 80s now. So I think it's um, can be well to honor him. And the other person is a man. How many of you have heard of uh, Octor Asen? Not so many. Octor Asen is, I believe, truly one of the brilliant thinkers of our time in the whole uh, body-mind area. And he's not very well known. I mean, here is a group of body psychotherapists. There were maybe a dozen people that raised their hands. Uh, this is a man whose work uh, is, again, is, should be discovered by all of us. So, um, so anyhow, I, I, of course, I leave that to you, but those are two suggestions. Also, as I was walking by, I noticed somebody had this on their table, and I said, could I borrow it? And this was, again, what I, what I saw in that Stone Age uh, oh, yeah. temple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.